Uh, okay, so I guess we can just sh jump directly to, you know, to the things that we want to show and take up the questions along the way. Yeah, I was actually thinking we could start off. I only have one question from the last video, so okay. we can just start off right with that so people can make sure that they see the question. Sure. So the only question that I really got from the last video was uh, somebody asking if you'll be able to mix eras in any way. Like, I, I guess you can kind of broaden that question a little bit more. Is like, is there any amount of, um, like, can you take parts from an older vehicle or a newer vehicle and use those in your designs? Or is it more of set to like a specific, a more rigid time period, I guess? Right, right. Well, to have is to have a certain overlap between the eras so let's say if you if you are you know if you got all the things that you like from the british tech tree from the world war one and then you decided to move in to the second which is the interwar era then uh, you will be able to uh, use maybe not all of them say what we call modifications and so on but quite a bit of those in the second period as well all right. So th that th that will be possible, but we are not thinking to make a complete, uh, you know, like you use the <laughs> the chicken wire from the First World War on Abrams. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> that, that <laughs> I mean, maybe for for an expansion that would be called uh, I don't know Halloween or something that we can do that. But otherwise, we we didn't we didn't have that intention. So basically, things that in our mind that make sense to drag along, you know, during the other time periods, we will allow. But things that clearly becomes obsolete and even difficult to match, you know, geometrically in 3D, those we will uh, leave in the corresponding eras. Yep, that makes sense. Okay, and uh, well, today we basically wanted to cover the things that we didn't uh, we didn't go so deep in the last uh, last of our talks. This is the warehouse production administration, and then also have a look on the uh, world map, discuss a bit and what kind of you know options you will have as a player when uh, talking to different countries. But <laughs> sort of the the, the first dis directly the disclaimer that. What you'll see now, this is basically a skeleton, you know, of the tycoon parts. I mean, we have quite a lot of ideas what can be expanded, what can, where we can bring more in depth into these things. So, we'll, this is the, an outline of how things will look like. And also, uh, clearly, since this is tycoon, we won't be showing, you know, this won't be that fancy as the last time when we were building the tanks in 3D and, you know, changing the components. So it will be a bit more of a uh, standard tycoon kind of table time thing, information. Yeah, and I assume since you're saying that uh, this is very early and skeletonized, that this is sort of an area where you could probably use a lot of feedback from people to kind of get an idea of what you want to do with it. Exactly, exactly. Because, it, you know, you can really invest a lot of time and resources in, I don't know, diving further, let's say, especially in the production. But is it really something that uh, the future players and supporters, they really want to see? Or maybe they would simply prefer to have a more variety of tanks to play with and more battles to play with. This is really where the feedback becomes really invaluable. All right, so this is the warehouse, right? So this is the place where the tanks uh, end up after they have been uh, created, after they have been produced. And the warehouse in general, it will serve us for three different functions. The first one is simply storing things, be that the tanks or the resources. Uh, and when it comes to tanks, uh, you will also have the possibility to directly from here actually to investigate what kind of contracts you have. In this case, for example, we're talking about, we have like two models that we're currently selling, the Mark One and Mark V. Mark V is a bit untraditional because we're using the Tadpole running here. <coughs> and you can see directly that here, for, for example, for Mark One, you currently have two contracts that are running out. You have a certain number of tanks that you voted to, you sort of, you promised to deliver, have the deadlines, same for the Mark V. In any time, you can investigate uh, the details of the contract. So this is the attribute of the tank that you actually 
you actually manage to sell to the customer. See a picture of the tank. Uh, you also see this interesting piece of information. You see which detachment is going to be equipped with this particular tank. And this is the sort of the, the mechanics that, you know, when you sell the tank to the country, it will be a specific detachment that will be using those. So you can actually follow that detachment and uh, yeah, do quite a few things there. Uh, you have a short description of the contract as it is. And you have sort of a fun, uh, like numerical description that is, you know, the price that you managed to sell, how many tanks, deadline type. You know, in this case, you just get the cash, you just get the money and overall information how much you will gain by fulfilling it, the gain in reputation, and also what happens if you fail to do it. Okay. Also from the very same sort of row, you can uh, go ahead and actually uh, choose to deliver the tanks. Uh, in our game, what we want to do, we want to, you know, this is now, this is the, really the skeleton part again. So we want not just to have a, a button that you know, teleports the tanks to the customer, mm -hmm. but uh, we introduce something called contractors. So you will have a number of contractors, companies that actually deliver, uh, can deliver your tanks to this particular country. In this case, this is Britain. They come in different flavors. You see that they have uh, five different uh, parameters that define them. So the speed, well, naturally, that's the speed of how quick they deliver. You have the safety. This is an important factor because that will, uh, you know, if, if the safety is low, there's a higher chance that your tanks will be damaged uh, during the transport. And that will affect certain attributes of your tank when they will arrive. Then you have the capacity. How many uh, units can this company can in total transport? A price per piece and a type of the transport. Uh, type of the transport is also quite important because uh, this is sort of, you know, um, kind of a limiter. If your tank is uh, doesn't weigh that much, if it's a light tank, then you can naturally use all kind of all types of transport. You can, you know, like with a French Renault, right? You can deliver them by trucks, the front line. Or you can maybe in the future, you can deliver them by the airplanes. But, you know, the, the heavier is the tank, the, the less options here you will see. So na naturally, the heaviest tanks, you know, you will have to rely, let's say, solely on the ships because they, they can take the most of the weight. Yeah, it makes sense. Mm. Yeah. And then you can, uh, I'll speak about this, uh, how that can be further connected to what we call uh, the news or events. But anyhow, so th these companies, they will not be static. This, uh, these stats, they will be changing during the course of the game. And also, you know, what companies are available to you will also be changing because that will be directly connected to your reputation to the host country. So the, the better is your reputation with the host country, the more options you will be presented with when it comes to the contractors. That, that's the kind of, you know, in a nutshell. Do you plan to also have it so that the as you use a certain contractor, like let's say I decided to try to ship by truck, will those stats improve or change over time if I use that company more, or do they stay pretty much static depending on your what you're trying to ship? You mean these stats, right? Yeah. Now we're talking about, you know, feedback from the community. So, uh, yeah. I mean, like in any you know, offer and demand, if you, for example, you use this company for more than the others, it feels kind of natural that they might want to raise the price, for example, right? Uh, also, something can happen along the way and, you know, the, let's say the safety can be affected as well. Mm -hmm. uh, th th that's what I just started to say, but I can, yeah, I can maybe just uh, shoot directly. Assume that you have um, you have an event. Uh, I don't know. The, let's say the the Germany is uh, starting to employ U-boats extensively, right? So you you get this in event. It feels first like well, this is kind of far fetched from the tank business, mm -hmm. but actually not because by using the U-boats, you can assume that all the companies that are actually relying on the sea navigation, on the seafarers 
they will suffer a reduction in safety because there's a higher risk of those transports being sunk yep. by the Germans. <laughs> that kind of mechanics and then you can build on on that you know you can have different events that uh, affect a uh, coal crisis so <laughs> you have a risk of being late when it comes to the railway connection right and so on and so forth so th th that's kind of the idea and then yeah and then depending on your action at least the price uh, feels natural for the price to also fluctuate uh, and yeah if there's any other ideas we'll be really happy to hear it because as I say you can yeah you, you can make uh, you can make quite deep the logistic components as well you can differentiate where the companies deliver you know and uh, how other like wars affect them and so on so that's uh, that's when it comes to tanks uh, contracts per model uh, details of the contract and uh, simplified logistics for the time being when it comes to uh, the raw resources, kind of in the same logic. So we have in total at the moment like nine resources. Not all of them will be available from the very start. Uh, it says not available in demo, but it will be actually not also available directly. You don't want to use composites in 1914, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, some will be available. And as you can see, uh, in this case, we are discussing, uh, we are talking about different suppliers of the resources. Uh, again, these companies are coming in different flavors. So uh, they, they are affiliated with the certain countries. As the contractors before, they do have also the speed of the delivery, safety. But now they have also the total amount available to them right now and the price. And again, the, the better is the reputation that you have with the hosting country, the more choices you will be given when it comes to the suppliers. You'll have uh, more companies to deal with, uh, to deal with uh, and those companies will, in general, you know, the highest reputation, the, the better deal you'll be able to negotiate with those uh, suppliers. And uh, yeah, so depending on what you need, uh, you go ahead, you you know, you book your resources, and you you know, you get those resources when the time is right, and uh, if nothing happens along the way. Mm -hmm. Again, with the resources, you can play along. You can have different crises, you know, the the global crisis affecting both the demand and the availability of the resources. Um, and another thing that we we probably won't have time to add it in the, in the upcoming demo, but there were some ideas to add, you know, um, uh, something called the quality of the resource. Yeah, I was actually thinking that as well, having different qualities of resources to affect the price and whatnot. The price and then uh, eventually it will affect the quality of your production of your tanks. Mm -hmm. So yeah take germany you know early world war ii and late world but i think this is a really good example of that kind of mechanics right mm -hmm. so yeah so that, that's the the base for the resource management and then again i mean there's uh, plenty of things that can be done here to simplify the job of the player on handling those you know you can uh make it more user friendly when calculating how many resources you need depending on your you know either contracts signed or the productions to come uh and how many you choose and so on so th this is something that we're going to take care of this at the very last um what else is interesting well yeah this one can be also interesting to show so like um in any building those six buildings that we have at the moment uh, each of those buildings will have an overview window. And uh, this window, uh, in the middle, you can see the, the stats, the attributes of the building, how many uh, the maintenance costs, you know, the, the staff, uh, different kind of risks, and the sort of building specific attributes. In this case, we're talking about the storage capacities and sort of shipping away or accepting the goods. Then to improve on this one, on the right, you have uh, the different attribute, different upgrades that you can purchase. So this is like a one-time purchase and you know, you pay a certain amount of money. And in, you, in due time, you get, yeah, 
get an improvement of that or this uh, attribute of the building. And then you also have uh, what we call administrators. So this is like uh, super characters. Uh, they are coming in few numbers, but uh, they sort of, you know, they land, uh, they, each of them, of course, will come with a story and so on, but they, what they do, they land uh, certain bonuses or penalties further to the building. And they will grow with you, you know, along the course of the game, they will raise the levels, they will gain more perks, hopefully giving you more and more uh, advantage. Yeah, and you can actually also play with this because, you know, the way you can make the, the perk tree, you know, you can make it uh, as a simple, something simplistic when you see all the perks available and they will be just increased, you know, level by level. Each level is so incrementing the bonuses. Or you can actually make something maybe more uh, more dependent on your choices of the player that you did with this administrator. And this is what we're sort of trying to to, uh, to go towards. And also, of course, th these guys, you know, they're not in, in immortal ones. So they, they, they will have a certain time span that they will stay with you. We have not exactly decided if that will be based simply on the lifespan or it will be based on the sort of contract that you sign with him but the point is that they will not stay for, with you forever so you will have to if you want to get this guy you know if you want to have one guy per building you will have to see to it that you have certain rotation that you bring new people right because you know that the ones that you started the game with from the beginning they will yeah eventually they will leave one way or another mm -hmm. um okay so now if we go to uh, to the production, uh, this one, again, it's a bare bone production at the moment. So you have uh, what we call assembly lines. And actually this is, if you really would go to the factory, you know, that this is sort of the final assembly because you, you have all the pieces and bits there. So what's left for you to do, you, you build up your production queue. And that you do by choosing one or two models that you have uh, sold. In this case, you have Mark 1, you have Mark 5. You can see directly here how many tanks you have in contracts. This is your obligations. How many you have in stock. And you basically just choose the number of tanks you want to produce. You locate your workers. And uh, you see that here you have a summary of the total amount of resources you need to get, uh, you need to have to build it. And uh, there you see how many days it will take you to do this. You go ahead and you build up your queue. This is another place where we would gladly get the feedback uh, because you can build it really deep. You can really uh, create. I mean, think of this like creating a you know small factory ground inside the building where you uh, where you plan your assembly lines and you have different assembly lines depending on the tank components. And how you plan them, you know, will impact the output, the overall output of your production as a total unit. So th that's one way, for example, to really bring in depth into this building. But for the time being, it's like, uh, like I showed you, and uh, yeah, we're looking looking forward to get the to get the ideas and the feedback on that. Right, and then the final building that we, as we say, we, we, we tend to dump all the uh, book, bookkeeping activities here. That's your office, that's the administration. So uh, the basics of that, well, the first of all, you have the, the management of your human resources. So you have the major groups, you know, workers will come in larger numbers. Uh, the engineers will come in some fewer numbers. And then you have the, your administrators. So you will uh, have a coming ones and you are free to choose if you want to employ them. And directly from here, for example, you can assign different ones to different buildings. And now also all of this will have a tendency to change with time, both the salary, uh, how many, how many uh, persons are they available for you? And uh, 
especially the salary most likely to also be connected to the, you know to the demand and offer and what's happening sort of in the background in the world so there's like a depression or a depression a war and so on but it, it, it's worth to say that there will not be you know unlimited so whenever you want to cut the cost by just firing say half of your work is you have to think it through because it might come to the point that you need those hands to produce but you don't have them available on the market yep so that that's that's the thing and then of course a basic accounting we need to introduce so you as a player you can control your expenses and income you'll be able to shift between the annual and the monthly report and yeah as you can see it's a very simplified so on the left you have the income uh, most of the income naturally will be coming from the tanks that you sold uh, and they will be sort of connected they will be clustered together by the country so in this case we sold to the to britain sold 40 units 10 units to france this is how much money we made and we also managed to sell some <clears throat> some units of mark 5 and then you'll have the other sources of income. Um, I bet this list will be increasing the further we go with the development. But for the time being, we, you'll have three. Uh, the first one is when you resell your raw resources. Let's say you're, you're stripe on cash, right? You need to free up the space. So you go on and you sell those. Uh, the second one is uh, different tasks that you will have a possibility to accept. And some of them, the the gratification will be simply money. So this is another way. The last one is probably something you don't. Yeah, I mean, this is the, the last resort income. If you take go to the bank and take the loan. Now on the expense part, uh, especially in the first stages of the game, uh, it will be your factory ground, the factory that will be consuming most of the money. Uh, maintenance all the buildings this is something that will be also growing the further you upgrade the buildings the, the bigger they are the more capacity they they are they represent so the, the higher will be the maintenance then you have the cost for the staff those three groups that we have there we have a sort of for one time costs when you actually purchase those upgrades this is uh, another line of expenses and uh, yeah, uh, whenever you buy the resources, whenever you sort of go on and you uh, hire the, the contractors to, do, to deliver the tanks, that also counts in. And now the bank, but in this case, the bank means that you actually are paying the loan and paying the rent. That will be there. Mm -hmm. uh, satellites, this is so we call it actually holdings now. This is an old, uh, an old name. Well, this is something that will kick in uh, later in the game. And this is the way for you sort of to expand beyond the borders of uh, your host country, in this case, Britain. So you will be able to, depending on the re reputation standing with different countries, you'll be able to purchase uh, the satellites or holdings that will yield you a certain bonuses give that like the speed of the delivery or maybe even some small production bonuses or the resources uh, so m most of the you know m most of the parameters that are affecting your handling uh, with the customer they will be you'll be able to upgrade that by also by the satellites and that of course will also come with a certain maintenance uh, so that's the that's the mechanics that we have right now and I think that that's it. So that kind of ramps up the, well, almost, yeah, almost. I forgot these the little tabs. Um, they also uh, important in the game. So on the left you have the news, and uh, you. This is where all the major events uh, sort of appear for you to evaluate and maybe sometimes do some actions. Uh, in this case, we have three. You see that you have completed, let's say, the research, that there's the news about the anti-tank anti corps establishment, and there's some news from the battlefield, from the campaign development. Uh, we, in general, we want to have, like, you know, at least three types of events or news. One will be um, sort of just an informational one, like this one. You don't really have to do anything, but you are notified about a certain advancement. 
and you will have an event like, uh, let's say, for example, this U-boat threat that I mentioned before. I mean, an event that has a certain consequence of uh, uh, certain game mechanics for you. Uh, let's call it influential. And the third type of events that we will have, this is when you are faced with a certain um, question or, you know, alternative. And then you have to make a choice. You know, do you do this or you don't do it? And you will have a certain consequences on both sides. Let's say Germany approaches you and they want you to sell them your tank design. Will you do it for a big lump of money and suffer a possible, you know, uh, penalty with a reputation with Britain? Or you don't and you lose the money. So that's, that's up for you to decide. Right, and then on the left we have the tasks, and this is also what I just mentioned, like uh, from time to time different countries will offer you to engage in a specific mission, a specific task, that in general will be sort of spread along all the activities that you can do over on the factory ground. And uh, if you choose to accept the task, you, you know, if you fulfill it, you get the reward, they can be different, can be money, can be resources, Maybe characters, uh, or sometimes can be even uh, like pieces of equipment. If you don't, well, yeah, you usually suffer a small penalty or uh, yeah, something else. Maybe sometimes you don't suffer a penalty. It depends on the task. This is another game mechanics that we want to introduce. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I think it will be an interesting addition to play with. Yeah, but now I think, yeah, now we are actually done when it comes to what's happening on the factory ground i think we i did cover everything right Lars? yeah indeed yeah all the six buildings the news the tasks so that's um yeah that's how you sort of start off with your tank building company so to say now we can go to uh we can go to the world window so again, don't don't bother about the <laughs> the outline of the countries. I still remember that comment that we got, I think, on your channel that this is not really depicting the boundaries of the British Empire in 1914. Mm -hmm. um, so we will fix that. But yeah, the the logic, so the mechanics that uh, you will see here is that along the time, along the course of the game, more and more like these flags will appear representing different countries that are willing to or you know that are open for tank trade and they're starting to create different contracts and uh, it will be up to you to decide with whom you want to build relations or whom maybe you want to avoid because they are sort of aggressive country or maybe they are low on the budget and so on and uh, there's a number of options when it comes to negotiation. So we have a, a general description of the country that will, should give you a feeling for what you can expect from them when it comes to the world relations, when it comes to uh, development and so on. We have an economy tab. Uh, again, this is a skeleton. I mean, it will be, there will be more options here. But the, the main pieces in the economy to look at is the military budget that will uh, influence on how many contracts are, go are uh, going to appear, uh, how sensitive the country is to the price that you are sort of uh, to offer, and uh, also the resources, right? As we discussed, there will be a number of companies uh, affiliated with the host country so here you can for example see that this country uh, it's uh, yeah it has a solid supply when it comes to these three resources you have that many different companies that you can gain access to if your reputation checks now reputation that, that's sort of a main uh, a main uh, asset when it comes to dealing with a company so you generally want to have it as high as possible and uh, you do that by by signing deals, you know, by fulfilling the tasks, by maybe some sort of event-based uh, gains. <clears throat> but you can also lose it implicitly. So if you again, again, if you take Britain and Germany, if you start dealing with Germany, 
while Britain is sort of in conflict, then naturally reputation will suffer. Um, and depending on your reputation, you know, how, how good is your standing, you will have an option to engage in uh, sort of uh, better and better contracts. In this case, for example, we can see we have an, two contracts that we already signed. This is for two detachment, company A, company B. Uh, we currently have two contracts available. We can go and uh, engage in negotiation. And we also have uh, something we call rumors. So this is one way for you to sort of do some planning ahead. You know, what, how many contracts are going to appear uh, for this country? Is it worth for you to invest your time and energy in this? Or maybe there's nothing to come. You also see that you have uh, two contracts for the tier two, but it's currently locked for you because your reputation standing is not enough. Same goes with the tasks. Depending on the reputation, you will have different uh, tasks available and they're coming with the different rewards. In this case, the first one is uh, offering you only money as a reward, while the second tier task is actually offering you an enemy tank for your reverse engineering purposes. So that's clearly a more juicy reward to go for, but it's uh, yeah, in general, they will sort of go higher in complexity from tier to tier. Mm -hmm. Uh, tank trophies, this is a way for you to directly, explicitly sort of, you know, uh, restock your supply of enemy technology, to purchase those, but that will be, uh, we want to make some sort of differentiation, so that most likely will be the, the expensive way for you to do that. You see by the price, it's 10,000, it's worth quite a lot, and, uh, uh, but Still, if your reputation allows you do that and you then go and engage with the reverse engineering as you wish. And then we are left with these two fellows, the tank corps and the anti-tank corps. So tank corps, <laughs> it's, it's um, kind of uh, basically a hub of all the information that directly relates to how this country is planning or using its tanks, its different tank regiments. Uh, so first you have Tank Doctrine, and this is the one that uh, decides on what kind of tanks this country wants to purchase. We're we talking about light tanks, we're talking about heavy tanks, tanks uh, focusing on, let's say, the mobility properties, maybe on the protection and so on. <clears throat> And also, uh, the Doctrine will come with a certain number of what we call tactic slots. Uh, so you, you can, can have a situation that the Doctrine is the same, but some of the tactics, they get old and they get, you know, changed. They're changing with time, so they're giving something new. But the way the tactics uh, work is that during the battles, during the checks, when the tanks are doing their battle checks, each tactic will yield a certain bonus or sometimes a penalty to the actually battle performance. Uh, we this way we want to sort of mimic um, the situation when the country, for example, it doesn't have a very uh, technically doesn't really have a very uh, advanced tanks, but on the tactical side. They're really on top of your, their enemies. That's, uh, I think a good example of this is Blitzkrieg. Right? The Germans, they didn't really have uh, the, the best tanks in the world by the start of the Second World War, but their understanding of how to use tanks and the application of that on the battlefield was far superior to their opponents. And this is the way that that can be done in the game. So this way you can, you know, when you are searching and you're looking for different customers, if you find a country like this that has a sound understanding, sound doctrine, and has a good list of the tactics and you see the bonuses, well, it might make sense to sign up with a, such a country because you know them, uh, if you sell the tanks to this country and they eventually they will be tested, the chances that they will perform well, or even maybe exceptional, are higher and if they do that, then you, you get this wheel turning, right? Your tanks get reputation, add addition, and it's even easier for you to sell them later on, and so on. 
And you also get, of course, sort of a reputation as a company as well. So that's, um, that's the idea. And then we have the regiments. So the regiments is another uh, twist. And regiments and the contracts, they go sort of hand in hand. So when, when you sign the contract, if you remember from the warehouse, there was a company A feature there. You sign the contract, you uh, directly, th th these tanks that you sold, they directly get assigned to a specific regiment. In this regiment, it will have a history. So in this case, we see the regiment A ended up on the Western Front in the World War I campaign. And it will be staying there for quite a while. So it will be sort of following from battle to battle, uh, testing your tanks. And uh, you will have a chance to, well, to see how that goes. You will be getting a feedback. And depending on that, you can make a decision either to continue with this model, for example, to maybe make an upgrade kit, or up to you. Maybe you wish that you see that the model is completely obsolete and you need to kind of abandon it and start doing actually something new. So that, that's, uh, that's the mechanism. And uh, yeah, something similar will be also implemented when it comes to the anti-tank corps. There will be also a doctrine and uh, several tactics uh, that, well, in your case as a tank supplier, that is your uh, one of your opponents besides just enemy tanks. And uh, yeah, the regiments we will probably abolish. That's not interesting. So instead, you here you will see a list of the anti-tank weapons that is actually sort of, uh, composes the, ar the arsenal of this country. So this is something that you will have to consider when your tanks are facing the anti-tank uh, troops or anti-tank corps of the corresponding country. Uh, right, that's uh, yeah, that's sort of a crash course in uh, what we will see. <laughs> on the battlefield, uh, sorry, on the diplomatical window. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, please do shoot. Oh yeah, I mean, it's a very, uh, a lot more information than a lot of the other ones for people to sort of digest. So I'm sure we'll have some questions regarding uh, some of the mechanics and uh, hopefully some feedback. Like, uh, like you've been saying, you guys are looking for feedback. So if anybody who's watching wants to leave any suggestions or maybe changes that they would make or things that confused them leave it down below because obviously everything is early in development so the more information you guys are given by everyone the better the game will be when it reaches kickstarter when it reaches the demo phase and eventually into uh i'd assume betas and then into the full game absolutely i mean it's uh, you know the time is running short so it's um uh... Uh, it's difficult to promise that you know all the requests and all sort of the suggestions that they will be implemented directly in the demo uh, to be realistic, but in the later stages for sure, because that's uh, I mean one of the purpose of the demo is really to collect all of that feedback and uh, sort of uh, decide in which direction to go when it comes to alpha and beta releases. Yep, and as before, I'll leave links to all your guys' uh, all the links that you guys have for social media and whatnot in the description so people can go and check you out on your Discord and on your uh, other social medias if they want to leave suggestions directly there so maybe you guys get it a little bit faster or you don't miss it if it gets buried in the comments. So you guys can go check that out and uh, just be sure to leave as much feedback as you can because the more feedback you can give the better that this game will eventually become which it already is looking very very well done and i can't wait to get my hands on it thank you thank you thanks thanks indeed um yeah and i think last last thing to say here is well the only the only piece actually that we have not shown anything about and then this is what we aim for the next round is actually to show the battle performance. What, what what do we mean when we speak about the tactical map and what do we mean about, you know, the tank battles? How will they be represented in the game? That, that's the topic for the next update. Yeah, so uh, everybody should really uh, be ready for that. Make sure you have the bell on if you want to catch that next video when it gets <laughs> uploaded, which shouldn't be too far along from now. 
So let's uh, all look Absolutely. forward to that. Thank you. Thank you for today. And uh, yeah, looking forward for our next call. <laughs>